Hi everybody, welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, where I'm Mark, a former diving instructor, do my very best to try and answer your scuba diving questions from the internet. Uh, if you have any questions, then pop them down in the comment section underneath this video, or any one of our scuba diving magazine videos, doesn't really matter, I see them all. Uh, but if you do use the Ask Mark hashtag in your comment, it gets yourself and your question featured in an up and coming video. Uh, I do type out an answer in the comment section in the meantime, so you should get an answer sooner than having to wait for the actual video to come out but today I'm answering a question from Kazue uh, about decompression and rebreathers I apologize if I get your name wrong Kazue Teresa Galgo says, is decompression sickness still a thing in CCR? Yes, you can still get decompression sickness on a rebreather. Um, CCR is closed circuit rebreather, if you didn't know. Basically means where you're recycling the gas mix that you're breathing. Um, instead of open circuit, uh, which is the traditional bubbly scuba diving, uh, with open circuit, if you only bring one gas mix down with you, so a single cylinder, that's what you're breathing for your entire dive. So the partial pressure of the gases that you're breathing on that open circuit will be changing with depth because of the increase in pressure around you. Uh, the deeper down you go, it's as if you're breathing a, a higher concentration mix. That's why you're on-gassing, you're absorbing those, um, uh, those gases into your tissues that much faster. The, the deeper you are, the bigger that concentration gradient, but a rebreather can adjust your gas mix on the go so that you're breathing the best gas mix for the depth and portion of the dive, and that will extend your no decompression limit. That being said, if you exceed limits, you skip a stop, you ascend too fast, yes, you're still going to get decompression sickness. There's, there's no way of avoiding that, and it's all down to the basic laws of scuba diving physiology and physics still apply. You're still absorbing gases into your tissues because you're at that heightened pressure when you're deeper down underwater. So if you ascend too quickly, which is effectively uh, what creates decompression sickness, um, that sudden reduction in pressure around you, all of those dissolved gases still want to come out of solution, and whether it be in your tissues, in your bloodstream, you get decompression sickness. So, uh, yeah, rebreathers, they're, they're good at like extending your no decompression limit. They're good at allowing you to go to deeper depths and stay there for longer. Uh, however, they don't grant you immunity to, to decompression sickness. So the way rebreathers work are you've got two cylinders, traditionally two cylinders on your back. You have diluent and you have oxygen. Diluent is there as a packing gas. Uh, it's normally just air, about 21% oxygen, depending on where you are. And the other one is pure oxygen. So 96, 98%, depending on uh, what grade uh, pure oxygen you can get in that area. Diluent, yeah, is just as a packing gas. It's just to fill out, just so that you have something to fill up your lungs and your counter lungs. The, the oxygen is there to top up any oxygen that you are respiring. When you exhale, in a rebreather, you have two hoses. Um, and whenever you exhale, it goes out of one side. It's usually it comes out of your right hand side. It then goes through that corrugated hose. It's not pressurized. It's just pressurized to whatever you're exhaling. It goes through a bunch of one way valves just so it doesn't go the wrong direction. It will go into a counter lung, sometimes with a drain, just in case any water gets in the loop, it can trap itself in the drain. And then, with your next breath, it pushes it through the scrubber. The scrubber takes out the carbon dioxide and then it goes past some sensors. Usually you have oxygen sensors, sometimes you have carbon dioxide sensors. The oxygen sensor tells the computer, okay, the, the gas that's coming with the next breath is going to be this percent of oxygen. And then it works out, well, at this depth, I want it to be this current mix and it opens up the um, uh, the oxygen valve, tops it up, and gets that breath to a preferred like nitrox level effectively. You inhale and you suck it through the other uh, left hose and, and then that cycle continually just cycles. Um, oh, sorry, it goes into a second count lung first, I forgot about that. 
So with open circuit bubbly scuba, when you inhale, you're inhaling whatever's in that air or nitrox cylinder, and that's it. When you exhale, it just goes up to the surface. You're wasting a lot of gas. With a rebreather, it's recirculating it, analyzing it, and topping it up. And the computer's working out, oh, okay, at this depth, at this portion of the dive, it would be really useful if they had this gas mix, and it adjusts it accordingly. The same with if the loop gets too low and there's not enough physical gas volume to be able to inhale and fill your lungs, then the diluent opens up and it just packs it out so you have something to breathe. And then it's just continually going around and around and around, uh, topping up the, uh, the oxygen as it needs it. And yeah, it's just continually giving you the best gas mix so that it's extending your no decompression limit. You can stay at that depth. And then at the end of the dive, when you're trying to get rid of nitrogen, it will give you a an oxygen rich mixture to really try and draw all of that nitrogen out of your um, out of your tissues without it forming bubbles. So they're very very clever. They're very good at letting you stay in the water for longer. However, if if you exceed those limits, if you ascend too quickly, you do something wrong. Yeah, it's you're still going to get decompression sickness. They're they're not a magic machine that will uh, prevent you from getting any kind of uh, decompression sickness. It just allows you to stay down for longer and uh, adjust your gas mix so it's it's more efficient. Yeah, rebreathers, clever machines, um, but they, they don't negate the laws of like diving physiology and decompression uh, sickness, unfortunately. It's all based on the, the nitrogen that you're absorbing into your gases, uh, sorry, into your tissues, along with other trace gases. And it's, yeah, it's just continually adjusting that gas mix, which is great for allowing you to stay down longer. However, uh, yeah, you still have that dissolved nitrogen. It's normally just less of it. Um, depending on the dive um, so no you can still definitely get decompression sickness um, it is just rebreathers are a bit more clever than uh, than just standard open circuit good question um, interesting question and once once you go from open circuit to closed circuit you suddenly learn about oh, okay there's a lot of interesting stuff that we can do with mixing gases uh, especially on the go um, but yeah, that is, uh, it's, it's not gonna protect you from, uh, from all decompression sickness. Uh, if you have any uh, scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, use the AskMark hashtag, that'll get yourself and your question featured in an up and coming video. Remember to head over to our magazine, scubadivermag.com, subscribe to the channel, do all those good social media things. Thank you for watching everybody, and of course, safe diving.